Welcome to Origami. We'll be building this simple prototype, and by doing so, learning the fundamental building blocks of using Origami. We'll also learn how to import from design tools such as Sketch and Figma. Follow along by downloading the lesson files that accompany this tutorial, and if you haven't already, download the latest version of Origami from origami.design. Importing from design tools like Sketch and Figma is as simple as copying and pasting. To import from Sketch, make sure you have the Sketch file from the Getting Started lesson open. Next, select the photo layer and info group from the Cities artboard and hit Command-C to copy. In a new origami file, hit Command-V in the Canvas view to paste in the Sketch layers. Don't worry if your layers have shifted over a bit. We'll fix this later on. To import from Figma, you'll need to install the origami plugin from the Figma plugin community. Launch the Figma origami plugin and select the photo layer and info group in the city frame. Then click the Copy Selected Layers button in the plugin. In a new origami file, hit Command V in the canvas view to paste in the Figma layers. Let's take a quick tour of the origami interface. On the left hand side of origami is the layer list, where we see the layers from the canvas. We should see our Golden Gate Bridge photo layer and info group that we imported here earlier. To the right of that is the viewer. This is where we can see and interact with our prototype as if it were on our mobile device. On the right hand side of Origami is the inspector, which lists out all the properties of the currently selected layer. The middle section of Origami is split between two views, the canvas view on top, where we can visually lay out our prototype layers, and the patch editor on the bottom, where we create the logic for our prototype's interactions, animations, and behavior. You can adjust the split view between the canvas and patch editor by dragging between the two views, or by toggling the patch editor in the toolbar. After pasting in our layers from Sketch or Figma, you may have noticed that our layers got shifted over a bit. Let's fix this by selecting the photo layer and info group from the layers panel and dragging to the left until those layers are centered. Now that we've set up our layers, the first thing we want to do is add an interaction to our photo layer. To add an interaction to a layer, hover over the layer in the layer panel, click on the circle icon on the layer, and then click tap. This is our first patch, an interaction patch. We'll cover patches in more detail a little bit later on, but for now, let's just keep an eye on our down and tap outputs of our patch while tapping on the photo in the viewer. You'll see that both of these outputs will light up corresponding to when I press down and when I release, which equals a tap. We want this to transition between two values of scale, a scale of one, which is what we have now, and a scale of whatever fits into the screen, which is about 0.31. The next patch we need to add is a transition patch, since we want to eventually transition between these two values. We can add another patch by double tapping the patch editor, typing define transition, and then hitting return. Let's put these two values as our two inputs on the transition patch. Make the start input 0.31, since we know that's the scale that fits the photo in the screen. And the end value should be 1, which is already at by default. Next, we want to connect us pressing down on the photo to transitioning between those two values. Let's connect the down output of our purple interaction patch to the progress input of the transition by clicking and dragging from the down output into the progress input of the transition patch. We want this transition to affect the photo scale. Let's connect this transition to the photo scale by clicking and dragging from the transition patch output to the scale property of the photo. All right, so you can see now that as you press down on the photo, the transition occurs instantly between 0.31 and 1. The next thing we want to do is add a little animation to this. So let's make a little room between the interaction and the transition patches. Let's then double tap on the patch editor, type to find animation, and then press return when we get a pop animation. Insert this patch between the interaction and transition patches by connecting the down output from the interaction patch to 
the number input of the pop animation patch. The progress input of the pop animation patch to the progress input of the transition patch. You'll start to see now that everything in origami flows from left to right. Now when I press down on the photo, the transition is eased or animated. We can change some of these animation settings in pop animation to have a completely different feel. All right, this is great. But we want this transition to occur when we tap the photo, not just when we press down. Try connecting the tap output of the interaction patch to the number input of the pop animation. You'll see that it's triggering, but it's not holding that state. That's because a tap lasts for one frame when you release your finger. To do that, we need to add a switch patch to our patch editor. Double tap on the patch editor, type to find switch, and then press return. Like we did with the pop animation, let's insert this between the other patches. Let's connect the tap output of our interaction patch to the flip input of our switch, and then connect the output of our switch to the number input of our pop animation. All right, let's give that a go. You'll see now that whenever we tap, that triggers a flip on the switch patch, which doesn't flip back until we tap again. Our transitions stay at one progress until we flip back to the other by tapping once more. You'll see now that whenever we tap, that triggers a flip on the switch patch, which doesn't flip back until we tap again. Our transition stays at one progress until we flip back to the other by tapping once more. The four patches that you see here make up the bulk of your prototyping in origami. So once you get used to using them, you'll be up and running. Let's finish up our prototype. We can reuse the same chain of patches to animate the opacity of the info group as well as the color of the artboard background. Let's start with the transition for the info group opacity. Double tap on the patch editor to bring up the patch library. Start typing transition and then press return. We can connect the existing output of our pop animation patch to the progress input of our transition patch. We want our info group to start at an opacity of zero and end at one. So the defaults here are actually perfect already. Let's connect the output of the transition patch to the opacity property of our info group. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Lastly, let's add the transition for the artboard background color. We're gonna transition the background from white when it's zoomed out to black when it's zoomed in. Double tap on the patch editor, start typing transition, and then press return. By default, the transition patch is gonna transition between two numbers, but we want it to transition between two colors. We can do this by clicking on the header of our transition patch. This will bring up a dropdown to change the type of transition. We're gonna select color. You'll see that this brings up two color swatches for the start and end values of our transition patch. Let's change this so that the start color for when our photo is zoomed out is white, and our end color for when our photo is zoomed in is black. Like before, let's connect the progress output of the pop animation patch to the progress input of the transition patch. Now let's connect the output of the transition patch to the background color property of the artboard in the inspector panel. You can see now that as you interact with the prototype, it transitions the background color from white when the photo is scaled down to black when the photo is zoomed in. Like I was saying earlier, these four patches make up the bulk of your prototyping in origami. Have a look at the examples from this tutorial and later tutorials, and these will soon become second nature.